Hi Dixon family! I'm so sorry that we can't be together in person for family day at the Dixon. So I thought I'd bring you over to Hutchison and show you our farm. My name is Tracy Zerwick Ford. I'm Director of Fine Arts and Community Engagement and welcome to the farm! Director of Environmental Education and Sustainability at Hutchison School and I just want to show you a few things growing on the farm. So you can see around the perimeter of the farm we have a lot of native plants growing um, that are native to, to western Tennessee that will help support the wildlife, um, the pollinators, the birds that we have uh, native to our region. If you walk through here you'll see a lot of early spring flowers growing uh, we planted early spring flowers um, in the fall as seeds with some of our lower school girls because different grades in lower school here at Hutchison study different kinds of pollinators. So we had different early flowers that support um, both honeybees and native pollinators that you find in the area. So that's why you'll see a lot of pretty flowers growing right now. Some of our second grade girls uh, studied orangutan habitats this year with our partners at the Memphis Zoo and doing some of their research they, they discovered that orangutans really like to eat kale so they planted this kale um, in the winter for, uh, for the orangutans at the zoo. Which is fun. You'll see some of our little heirloom cotton seeds, uh, seedlings starting to emerge. Uh, this is a fun heirloom variety of cotton that actually grows green fibers instead of white fibers. So we'll get to play with those in the fall. Just ignore all the weeds in there. Haven't gotten to them yet. So you can see these red, red leafed plants are the, uh, are the heirloom cotton. Our pre-K friends planted some of these zinnias as they were studying rainbows and colors. Um, so I'm really excited to keep documenting their growth so I can send pictures and videos to our pre-K girls here just to keep them updated. Um, we're expecting them to, to grow up a little bit and be in bloom in about a month. Got more early spring fat flowers to support our pollinator habitat. You can see over here we've got garlic growing. That's again something that we plant in the fall that we harvest in the late spring. We've got sunflowers that are almost ready to bloom. You can see we've got different kinds of greens and flowers. We've got a perennial herb bed over here along this side of the greenhouse. Kind of behind the greenhouse, it's a little bit soggy over there right now from the rain, but um, behind this greenhouse we'll ha we have our fig orchard. Um, we're also growing uh, persimmons and pomegranates over there. The front of the greenhouse too here is where I've got um, seedlings that are waiting to go out onto the farm. More early spring flowers. This is one of my favorites. It's called Agrostemma. Um, again, the butterflies and the and the bees love this. It's a good it's a good early pollinator flower. You can see there's rainbow chard over here. This is something that's fun to grow um, with the girls because it's so colorful. It's called rainbow chard. All of the stems are a different color. It comes in bright fuchsias and pinks and oranges and white. Um, so it's a really beautiful, colorful vegetable to eat, and it tastes great. There's more flowers growing up over here, um, and some kale. But over here, this was a project done by some kindergartners and first graders. This is a, a variety of vegetable called walking stick kale. And this is a kale variety that'll get up to be 8, 9, or 10 feet tall. And when you harvest it, um, you can varnish the stems in the middle and they make really tall walking sticks. So we're really excited. I've never grown these before. Um, it was our first try with these kindergartners and first graders in an after school club uh, that then they planted these and they're, they're coming along great. It's already getting tall and you can kind of see the stems in the middle are starting to get thick. Just wanted to mention too, there's an arbor behind the greenhouse kind of before you get to the fig trees and the persimmon trees and we have hardy kiwis and muscadine grapes that will be growing over the arbor. They're in big pots right now. So 
you can see we're starting to transition from spring plants into summer plants. So over here I've got our San Marzano tomatoes along with some basil and marigolds along the side to help support them. San Marzanos are a great tomato variety for tomato sauce, for cooking Italian dishes. I pulled out some lettuce in this bed over here that was that was done and I planted cucumbers, but you can kind of see the lettuce is still wanting to come back. And even some of the lettuce seed that my friends that planted this have accidentally spilled along the outside. It's still going, growing strong right in the middle of the gravel. So I'll have to see if that tastes any good too. <laughs> We've got sunflowers over here. And this is one of the earliest years I've had sunflowers. They're getting ready to bloom. You can see them kind of puckered in the middle. They'll be blooming in a couple weeks. More flowers, uh, more tomatoes, more garlic that's almost ready to come up. Um, over here I have a plant uh, that's a fun plant. I, I grew with some kindergartners here as we were talking about different uses for plants. Sometimes we have plants that we eat. Sometimes we have plants like the walking stick kale that we might use to make walking sticks there might be trees that you grow for wood and we talked about plants that some people used to use for medicine so this is called fever pew it's it's an herb that some people used uh, to, to create medicine and now we're back to the beginning and I'm really glad y'all got to come on a tour of the farm today um, we would love to have you back on campus sometime when all of this craziness is over, we'd love to give you a tour here in person and I hope y'all are having fun outside in the garden.